This video is going to be about uh, the definition of independent events. So we'll start out with a definition. We'll try to give some intuition. The definition of independent events is not the most intuitive definition you've ever seen, but hopefully I can shed some light on the intuition. And then we'll rattle off some facts. I'm leaving examples out of this video in an attempt to make this video short, and then I'll follow it up with another video that is just based on examples of independent events. And hopefully, um, instead of having one long video, we'll have two reasonably short videos. So let's give it a go and give the definition. Two events, A and B, are said to be independent if the following equation holds. The probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of the intersection of A and B. And to be honest, the way you should treat this equation is as a question. If this equation holds, then the two events are independent. And what you should do is calculate left-hand side and then separately calculate right-hand side and then answer this question. Do these two sides equal? If the left-hand side calculated separately from the right-hand side, uh, if these two whole, if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, then we say the events A and B are independent. So that is not the most intuitive definition, which is why we're going to try on its own slide to give some justification for this definition. I want you to imagine the event A always happens. So in that case, we would say the probability of A is equal to 1. Just all the time, A happens. The definition of independent events is the only way to ensure that the event B and its probability is unchanged. Hence, they are independent. So the way you can think about this is, let's focus on the left-hand side. The probability of A times the probability of B is equal to 1 times the probability of B. Okay, and then focus on the right-hand side. The probability of A intersect B is really just equal to the probability of B because A always happens. So B and something that always happens is really just B. But in this case, we have the left-hand side, because it's just 1 times the probability of B, equal to the right-hand side, which is just the probability of B. So the key here for the intuition is interpreting this definition in the scenario that A is guaranteed to happen. If A is guaranteed to happen, then the probability of B and A is really just B, because B is the only one that may or may not happen. So the probability involved in it is just the probability of B. Now, it turns out this definition holds for all other, uh, for, well, you know, as long as the definition holds, then probability of A can be whatever it wants and the uh, same formula will work out. But hopefully this uh, 
gives you some idea of where the definition has come from. Okay, so let's give some facts. We'll say fact one. Suppose two events, A and B, each having non-zero probability are pairwise independent, uh, pairwise disjoint. Are A and B independent? Solid answer? No. It's a common misconception that pairwise disjoint means independent, and in fact, it does not. So let's consider a picture of pairwise disjoint sets, A and B. This is exactly how you would draw pairwise disjoint because the intersection between A and B is the empty set. So in fact, in this case, if A happens, we know that B has not happened. So in fact, they can't be independent because we have full information about B taking place when A happens. When A happens, we know B has not happened. So in fact, for the definition to hold of independent, a more appropriate picture looks like this. There has to be something in the intersection. And specifically, what shows up in the intersection in terms of probability is the probability of A times the probability of B. But the intersection cannot be empty because if it is, then the definition will not hold. And I encourage you to go back to the definition and try to write out what would happen for pairwise disjoint sets in terms of the definition, keeping in mind that A and B have non-zero probability. Okay, so that's a super important fact in the world of probability. Let's give another one, another fact that is fact two. If A and B are independent, then so are the following sets. Let's do it like this. A and B complement. A and B complement are independent. If A and B are independent, then A complement and B are independent. And you might guess it. If A and B are independent, then A complement and B complement are independent. That looks like, just so we don't stray too far from the definition, that would look like this in terms of the definition. And this is not a question here, this is a statement. If A and B are independent, then this equation holds for A complement and B complement. I'm not going to attempt to justify that uh, this in this class just yet. I might try to justify it later on in the class if we have time. Okay, and our last fact for the video. Events A, B, and C are mutually independent. And sometimes mutually is left out and we just say independent, but we mean taken as 
three in, uh, events if the following holds. Okay, the first, A, B, and C are, let's emphasize this, all pairwise independent. So that is probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Also, the probability of A intersect C is equal to the probability of A times the probability of C. Probability of B intersect C is equal to the probability of B times the, inter uh, times the probability of C. All of those need to hold for that first condition. And also, probability of A intersect B intersect C must equal the probability of A times the probability of B, times the probability of C. Oops. So long as these two conditions hold, then A, B, and C are all independent. And here's just an extra fact. This can be generalized to four events. A, B, C, and D, but the notation is tricky. So I ask that you just have faith and we'll skip the tricky notation. Essentially, if you had four events, you would need A, B, C, and D to all be pairwise independent. You'd need this second condition to hold for all combinations of three events taken from the four possible events. And you'd need a third condition where the probability of the four-way intersection is equal to the product of the four probabilities. So that hopefully gives you an idea of how this uh, definition of independence generalizes to more than two events. So that concludes our uh, video on the definition and facts of independent events. Hopefully it went okay for you.